But the thing that is eerie about this one, uh, this tornado actually touched down on the campus of Porter Ridge High School, Middle School, Elementary School. It's a big campus and damage on the campus to some fences, some trees, some some cars had their windows blown out. I just got a picture of a, a soccer goal was pretty much moved off a soccer field and a pretty far distance. But luckily, uh, nobody was injured or hurt. Yeah, you mentioned the uh, first uh, area of debris right there at that complex that houses those three schools, and then it continued uh, down the road. I had a chance to visit there uh, earlier this afternoon. The and National here's Weather Service office in Greenville, Spartanburg, quick today to say that they'd be coming out here to Union County, North Carolina, to survey storm damage in this community. It's the best way for meteorologists to know exactly what caused the damage. Was it damaging winds from a thunderstorm that were coming in a straight line fashion or possibly the rotation of a tornado. At the time, a tornado warning had been issued for this community because of rotation seen on radar. Now meteorologists will look to see exactly which trees fell, which way they fell, and what type of buildings may have sustained damage in order to estimate which way those winds may have been moving and exactly how strong they were. Based on uh, radar estimates and where the first damage point was, it looks like the tornado touched down at approximately 8.34 a.m. Um, but this was a very fast moving storm, moving at about 50 miles an hour. So it was really only on the ground for about three minutes. So it looks like it lifted at about 8.37 a.m. So preliminary rating of an EF1. School buses like this one behind me were just arriving to school this morning here in Union County when the storms hit. Union County opting to keep its schools in session today despite cancellations and delays in school districts nearby. We use all the data that we have at our uh, disposal uh, to issue warnings and we were heavily using the Charlotte, what we call the terminal Doppler weather radar, which has one minute data. And that was what we were using in this case to issue the warning. As I've been driving along this road, it seems indiscriminate on where the storm damage is. This particular tree suffering storm damage, while some of the trees around it don't seem to have a scratch on them. The National Weather Service looking at damage such as this to a home under construction along Friendly Baptist Church Road just across the street from the complex that houses the community's elementary, middle and high schools. Part of the debris on this property includes these pieces of metal which were picked up and thrown into the trees. Where they exactly came from, I can't say for sure, but as the winds continue to howl here in Union County, these pieces of metal have been heard banging up against the trees, a piece of storm debris that'll have to be cleaned up before it's picked up and thrown someplace else. I've just taken a short drive. This is now Lawyers Road. We're just down the street from where I showed you that damaged home. This is where power crews have been out all day installing at least eight new utility poles because as the storm came through this morning, the wind snapped these poles in half and knocked down wires onto the ground. Now these crews have had to operate safely amongst really gusty wind conditions, which can be hazardous when they're up in bucket trucks. The road remains closed as crews work to get those power poles and power lines restored. But uh, Brad, did you notice in their um, PNS that they put out today, they talked about that home that was damaged. And did yeah. you read the part about how they thought the wind funneled through the home? Yeah, I got got in through the garage, which is always the weak point of any you know structure, and kind of helped blow out part of that roof. Um, but that you know, I was glad you, you shot that video. That was close ups, the closest pictures I've seen. It that, that was pretty extensive. What's interesting is I think you made a good point that it was kind of sporadic the the damage along the yeah. way, and I think I think that was more an indication of these QLCS tornadoes, which you know don't always build from the the mesocyclone down. Sometimes they spin up near the ground, and so they tend to ebb and flow a little bit. They, their their yeah. formation is definitely a little bit different than a supercell um, tornado. So I, that kind of makes sense that it was kind of more sporadic. It was also interesting to me, while it's still heavily agriculture out there, it has yeah. transitioned a lot in recent years and decades. Um, and so what made me interested was I had a couple of uh, local residents that are new to the area uh, tell me that we don't get tornadoes here. <laughs> and um, I was like, oh, we get tornadoes here. In fact, I started looking at these EF4 tornadoes that have occurred in the past in Western Union County. And for the folks that aren't from the Charlotte area, we are one of the fastest growing urban areas in the country. And Western Union County is one of those areas. Back in 1989, when the, the EF4 hit then in May, 
there was none of these suburban developments. This school complex was built in like 2005. Um, and so that this is a great example. If that uh, EF4 tornado hit today, it would have crossed over almost the identical spot where Porter Ridge High School, middle school and elementary school is. So um, you'll see a lot of researchers talk about this, that, you know, um, as we get urban sprawl and urban areas get bigger, we become bigger targets for tornadoes.